Today's scripture reading is taken from the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 1 to verse 10. Verse 1. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone, and not in his neighbour. For each will have to bear his own load. Let the one who is taught the word share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap. If we do not give up, so then, as we shall have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I now pass the time to Pastor Robert for today's message. Blessed morning, church and friends. The peace of the Lord be with you. Today's message will be in uh, two parts. Firstly, we will look at what God had called us to do last year. The challenges we faced and how our church responded and what God has shown us and wants us to learn. Secondly, we will hear of the plans uh, that we as a church seek to do in the will of God. In our planning, we always acknowledge if the Lord wills to do this or to do that. We will see how we can carry them out together with the help of God and respond to God's calling in the areas of service, in touching lives or touching community for Christ. A last year's theme that is relevant, especially uh, in the even more challenging situation we anticipate to experience uh, this year. And so last year's theme is the same theme for year 2021. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we give you thanks that you are with us. You have not forsaken us. You have not abandoned us. The very fact, Lord, that we exist today and live today in the spirit, in Christ, we thank you, Lord, for the breath. We thank you, Lord, with, for the memory that we can uh, recall. We thank you, Lord, for every remembrance, Lord, of what you have done for us. We pray, God, that we are not like the nine lepers when they are healed and they forgot about our Lord Jesus. Father, we pray that each one of us will be like that one leper who are grateful to you, who will come back to you and to praise you. And so today, Lord, even as we recollect some of the things, Lord, that you have done uh, through the year with us, in your presence, by your power, and because of your goodness to us, we want to recollect and to praise you. That there be something there, Lord, as we see you working in our midst, that we may be, Lord, cherish it and to press on with you for the year 2021. This we ask in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Last year, uh, this was what God called our church to do. Disciple members to spiritual maturity. As we can see in the slide, care for diverse communities. Make known, make Christ known through connecting with our local community. This is what God called us to do last year. Did we fulfill it during COVID-19 pandemic? And that's the question I would pose to you, as we can see in the next slide. And look at the question at the bottom in the yellow band. That's the question we need to ask ourselves. Thank God we did not waste the pandemic. With God's help, we did what we could to carry out His purpose as God, as our God enabled us with His gifts and abilities. And just like I'm reminded of the parable of talents, which we heard uh, not too long ago, God has given each one of us an abil ability or the gifts that we can exercise. Uh, for his glory, for his purpose. And so how did SMC continue to fulfill God's purpose last year despite the pandemic? What do you think? As I was rec recollecting what God had done, I want to share with you a number of things. Firstly, we continue to worship God together around God's word and celebrated the Holy Communion. So we thank God whether when the situation improved and, uh, and we came back in person, and so we gathered together to worship. Yeah, The virus was still there, but because, God, <coughs> because of the CMC as RMCO, we were able to gather together, as you can see uh, in, the, in, the, in the screen. And when we are unable to, we worship together online, yeah, like now, right? So we, so we, we did that, and God enabled us. Uh, we didn't stop uh, worshiping God just because of a challenge. I'm reminded too, the early church were, was persecuted, you know, intensely. Did they stop worshiping God? No, right? So whatever challenge that we face, we continue as we are in fulfilling God's purpose. And one of the important purposes of God is to worship God together, yeah? <clears throat> Secondly, we pray together. As you can see in the next slide, we pray together. We love you all. So we pray for you, church. And thank God for the faithful band of Sunday morning intercessory group as well, as far as the ladies uh, fellowship group. I know you all are praying for the church yeah, and for individual members of the church regularly. We appreciate that. And so whether it was in, in person, the first prayer meeting of the year 2020, or when you're unable to meet physically, so we met just a, a few days ago, the first uh, online prayer meeting for this year. And so the intercessors were there praying for you, for you all, for the church, and we praise God for them. Thirdly, cell groups and ministry group, together, they came together to edify each other and serve others together. I know there are cell groups, different groups, even the CSG, you all are doing different things uh, as a group or individually uh, to serve that or encouraging one another. I want to praise God. And we have so much to praise God. I'm sure if you all write the testimonies, yeah, there'll be volumes of them. Yeah, <clears throat> that uh, uh, we have to uh, uh, listen to a, a number of hours to your testimonies of what, how God has done 
uh, work through each one of you. You know, 365 days in a year. Surely we can recall one thing in a day that God works mightily in and through us or as a cell group. Fourthly, we fellowship together, not only the cell group, but also in the online fellowship after worship service. As you can see, there we gather together uh, during the uh, worship service, one of the worship services. In fact, we do that every lost day uh, after the online worship service. Yeah, there will be exchanging of views, uh, exchanging of uh, greetings. Not only that, sometimes uh, we, people share online and then we pray, you know, uh, uh, during the online fellowship service. If you have not been part of it, you can join us even afterwards. No, sometimes people express their, their needs and we pray during this fellowship. Yeah, and, and, uh, and it's such an, a meaningful get together. Yeah, and of course, apart from that, there are occasions when the situation allows for it. Uh, there'll be celebrating of birthday together like the CSG. And I'm sure uh, the other groups as well, you have your own individual uh, uh, meetings or gathering uh, in person uh, whenever uh, the CMC, they are, especially during the RMCO period. Yeah. Fifthly, uh, we met the needs of different community groups. You know, our theme is touching community for Christ. And, uh, and that's what the church uh, uh, did last year. And the first community uh, is, is the migrant children, as you can see in the slide before you. Yeah. <clears throat> And there are uh, a, a, a few of our SMC worshippers that uh, they gave online tuition to migrant children uh, to the different centers. Huh? They are, they are, the, the people that you see, they are all not from the same center. Yeah? And of course, you wonder why uh, their, their eyes there have been uh, kind of blurred. Yeah? We want to uh, uh, be safe for them. And so that's why we are doing that. Yeah? <clears throat> Unlike our local people, you can see their full face and, and, and it is in rectangle in uh, yellow color and you can know who they are serving in the, uh, the migrants uh, children. The second community uh, that the church seek to uh, sort to uh, help out uh, is our very own Orang Asli youth. Yeah. And there were highlights last year. No? They graduated from the Masa College yeah, obtaining their a certificate and we rejoice with them and uh, our uh, OA uh, discipleship group leader uh, Sok Yen and also our staff Dorin uh, represented the church in witnessing uh, their graduation what a rejoicing yeah to see them through yeah going through the course yeah uh, and then later on uh, several of them secured jobs at uh, Beacon Hospital and a number of them uh, are, are still working there in the hospital. And we thank God for the way God provided for them and connecting us to, to uh, Beacon Hospital. And we rejoice with them. Huh? And right now, they can have a sustainable income yeah, to help themselves and also help their family members with the income that they receive. And we thank God. We thank God also for, for as we remember, for the different cell groups and individual ones who sent gift packs to them uh, during the MCO or the CMCO, CMCO period, you know, and for example, in the uh, Christmas gathering, uh, there were uh, people who uh, groups uh, or individuals from cell groups uh, giving them gifts or uh, hosting them uh, on an online celebration. And that's what we are doing uh, with this OA uh, uh, youth whom we have grown to love and connected. Yeah. <clears throat> and so please remember in prayer for these special people of ours, we want to nurture them. The third community uh, uh, is our very uh, own foreign brethren. And that includes uh, Noah Balamo, yeah? who had gone, uh, gone back to his home country in West Africa. Yeah? <clears throat> so um, um, church, I am I'm able to show you the pictures of the foreign brethren for uh, safety reasons. And so uh, you have only uh, our foreign brethren, uh, brother Noah there. And Noah has expressed uh, his gratefulness. He, he appreciated uh, SMC. He has uh, informed me and informed our, uh, some of our leaders as well. And also he, uh, he expressed his gratitude to individual members who had helped him financially. 
and in practical ways, such as providing him transport, yeah, sometimes to and fro, and sometimes picking, picking up from LR, the LRT station or sending him to the R, R, LRT station nearby, or even providing him transport on his very last day in Malaysia, yeah, uh, going to the airport, uh, despite the CMCO and for taking the risk. Yeah, and uh, he is very appreciative. And I, as, as a pastor, I'm appreciative uh, of those of you who have helped him and our foreign brethren uh, in such ways. <clears throat> Thank God for that. To meet the needs of these community groups, the different ones that we heard just now, financial resources are also critical. So, uh, so we can praise God uh, for uh, the generous giving collected uh, during our anniversary gift day offering, uh, that was beyond uh, the target, uh, in spite of a major economic slowdown. I mean, people may have might be thinking, no, oh, how to reach that target, no? Yeah, in, 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 people are, no, some of people are out of job or have pay cuts and so on. You see, our God is able to do far more than what we can ask or imagine, amen, right? And that's why we can see that, and that's why. Uh, God entrusted our church with more than what we targeted to be a channel of God's blessing to the people. And, and we targeted seven recipients. And because of the, the amount received that is beyond the target, we were able, church, to bless uh, uh, an eighth recipient, uh, which uh, had a very big deficit of 400,000 ringgit uh, at that point in time, uh, Malaysian care. And so thank God uh, for that uh, generosity and God teaching us to obey him, uh, to give cheerfully, to give generously, to give sacrificially of our resources. Truly, we have been more blessed to give than to receive, right? That's the word of our Lord Jesus in Acts chapter 20, verse 35. We also heard a sermon uh, not long ago on that. And so we are blessed with joy, you know, uh, to know that. Uh, uh, that, that God is able to do so much more than what we can think or imagine. May our giving not only met, meet the felt needs of the people, uh, but also produce many thanksgiving to God. Yeah? And this is one of the things that uh, the principle that, uh, that Paul was trying to teach uh, or in part instruct the Galatians you know, yeah? to share their wealth resources uh, with others uh, uh, who had uh, helped them in, 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 in spiritually. And so God is using us. That principle of helping others is so important. It's not only in Galatians, you know, it's to do good to others. It's all in uh, Matthew uh, chapter 5. It's also in uh, 1 John uh, <clears throat> uh, chapter 2. Uh, um, and there's also in uh, uh, the book of uh, James uh, chapter 2 as well. And so we see uh, God is calling his people to do something good. And thank God that uh, in obedience to God and trusting God, yeah, we were able to do that to the glory of God. Sixthly, we served together. And so, as you can see in the slide, next slide, thank God for the, uh, the AV team, the technical team, uh, <clears throat> um, the, our online team that came together and they rose to the occasion, no? So initially, we didn't have these people, you know, we didn't have this gadget, you know, this camera and so on. Uh, we didn't have the resources of the people. In fact, the, the people whom you see are just some of them only. You have more. The team is bigger than that. Yeah. <clears throat> so we thank God for each and every member of the team uh, who rose to the occasion, who gladly offered their services, yeah, their abilities. You know, they came around together. And many of them are the young people. And we thank God for them serving us faithfully week by week. And today as well, we are experiencing it firsthand of their help for us. And we thank God for them. Thank you, online team, for doing the service, important service for us. Seventhly, our church continued to reach out through the virtual platform. And so last year, if you recall, in December, <clears throat> we had our online Christmas evangelistic service, which was a first for SMC and with a special presentation item from 19 young people. And we're praise God for that. Yeah. 
they put in the hours together, they face the challenges, they surmount it, they trust the God, they pray, they put all the, the things together and to bring the lyrics, the words, the encouraging words and the glad tidings to the people. And many people uh, came uh, to join us, worshipers, members, and also our guests. We pray that the word, the seed planted, in, uh, the gospel that was shared uh, and, and the testimony that was shared by uh, uh, Brother David uh, uh, Ong and also the uh, gospel that shared by uh, Pastor uh, uh, Dr. Daniel Ho. Yeah? The seed may fall on the good soil of the heart and may produce one day uh, multiple, multiple uh, 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 fruits Lord, in their life to the glory of God. Amen. <clears throat> and of course, as you can see in the slide, there is also... Uh, uh, the time where our Lord opened another door. Actually, I recall our church uh, leaders wanted uh, us to make known Christ in our local community, you know, through the various uh, projects that we had in mind. But that was not possible huh, because of the first M MCO and then came the CMCO, right? And so uh, it, it is like uh, uh, this purpose is like, okay, how are we going to do that now? We can't reach out, build relationships with the community, yeah? build friendship, and so on. But God is able to do far more than what we can ask or imagine. And so our Lord opened another door for our young people to make Christ known through the Alpha Youth Online course. And that is happening still now. They are half, about uh, slightly more than halfway through. And over 25 young people attend weekly this Alpha uh, Youth Series, including guests from our members, CSG members, and also uh, students uh, from uh, uh, Myanmar and Sri Lanka uh, who are here in Malaysia. So we thank God and we are blessed with joy to know this. Many different ones, both adults and younger ones, yeah? All of you have been doing your individual parts, supporting each other, working well together, and even behind the scene praying, and sometimes not be, even being noticed by others. That's okay, because God notices you, right? And, and because of that, that we work together, right, in different ways, yeah, even in quietly, in actions or sometimes in this, you contribute through the strategic thinking in all ways, in various ways, each one of you have contributed in building up our church. And that's what God desires. And that's why God's purpose continues despite the pandemic. And that's why we now can understand what the church means, right? Right? An assembling of people together, whether in person or online. Praise God also, uh, you have been there for our church through the challenging times, even rising to the occasion. You are like the deep rooted planted trees and not like the portable potted plants as what Pastor Daniel Tan exhorted us to understand what a church really means. You remember that? He said we shouldn't be like this potted plant, you know, and he took the potted plant in the church and demonstrated to us by walking around. Yeah, because of problem, we leave the church to add another, another church and so on. Yeah, but no, despite the problems, we stick on together, yeah, uh, to serve together. And so you have remained faithful and serve the church in love, not run away when the going gets stuff. And I'm sure each and every member of the church appreciated yeah, that you are there with us still. So praise God, for you are a supportive spiritual family. Right? It's just like the biological family, not just because of a problem that your son, your daughter, your mother, your father, just run away from the home. It's not like that. We are there for the long haul. 
Yeah, we support one another. We encourage one another. In fact, we pray for one another even more if there are problems that we encounter. And so, church, as we look back, we can see how God's purpose continued to be carried out through our church with God's help, despite the pandemic and economic challenges and the massive disruptions that came with them. We have seen with our own eyes, God was with us last year. We have seen and experienced firsthand, God was at work through our church last year. We have therefore received great encouragement of God to press on. No one can, should say that we didn't see God at work. We didn't experience God's presence. Yeah? <clears throat> no. We have experienced all this. I'm just recollecting for us. In fact, there are many more things beyond what I had just said that I, I didn't even know about that God said work in your lives individually or in your small groups. So, as we think of God's purpose for our church this year, let us take responsibility for it. Let us persevere in it. Let us rely on the Holy Spirit to fulfill it. Now, if you look at the Galatians 6 passage that was read to us just now by Li Fang, you will, you will read some the word about the Spirit, yeah? that we should be sowing to the Spirit. We would, should be sowing to the things that advance the kingdom's cause, the purpose of God. And we should be relying on the Holy Spirit. And the context of Galatians chapter 6, the broader context is Galatians chapter 5. And if you read it, we are to live by the Spirit, to walk by the Spirit, to keep in step with the Spirit. And so, church, as we think of God's purpose for our church this year, take responsibility for, take responsibility for it. Persevere in it in spite of the challenges and rely on the Holy Spirit to fulfill God's purpose for the church and for us individually. Now, at the online leaders planning retreat last year, we met together, yeah, online. Yeah, and the church prayed together, the leaders prayed together, we sought the Lord together. Yeah, we discussed and we deliberated together. And then we planned together. Of course, always bearing in mind in the will of God. We planned with a shorter to medium term in view. And at that time, the envisaged scenario before us for our country this year wasn't good. Remember at the time, leaders, when we met together, the number of cases, the COVID cases, the positive COVID cases was far lower and now the number has run into four digits. And so the situation has become even more challenging than when the leaders met last, last year in November. Now, I want to say this, despite this challenge, great challenge that we are going to go through this year together, we, there are some plans that we are thinking of to strengthen the church and also to reach out. We believe these plans to be in alignment to God's purpose for our church. And we trust in God for his power to help us with the abilities and the gifts he had already given to us. So what are the areas that we are looking at? Firstly, in the area of discipleship. With regard to our Orang Asli youth, which I mentioned just now, the journey to help them continues. It does not stop at helping them with the transport, coming for worship service, 
in person, um, uh, helping them with uh, um, uh, finding where this Masa College is, sending them there initially, yeah, or hosting them, or uh, try to secure accommodation for them after they graduated, and uh, try to help them with their employment. It does not stop there. The journey to help them continues. And so the Padoman Harian 2021, yeah, or the daily devotional uh, in English, has been given to them yeah, through the OA discipleship leader, uh, Song Yen, to nurture them spiritually. Now I want to say this for them and for us as well. Huh? <clears throat> Reading God's word regularly and doing God's word can only make a wise young adult out of them. And that's why the daily devotional is an important resource to be placed in their hand. And I want to urge you, church, not just to hear about them, but please join in praying for them, will you? In your home, in your quiet time, in your cell groups. Meanwhile, we will continue to keep in touch with them and be there for them. And so we have also a WhatsApp group for them. I'm, all, I'm also in that group, yeah? And we keep tap on them and we want to encourage them as well. So Orang Asli Youth, if you are there in the worship service today, please know our church loves you and our church will continue to pray for you because you are special in God's sight. Yeah, you are a masterpiece, yeah? a work of art of God. And we want to really pray that you will grow spiritually, grow in grace, and grow in the knowledge of the word of God. Another aspect of discipleship is to equip our church in the area of evangelism. This was keenly expressed at the leaders' planning retreat. I remember that very clearly, because when we talked about evangelism, there was a, there was a kind of a passion, you know? uh, there was a robust discussion about evangelism during the leaders' planning retreat. Thank God for that passion. <clears throat> and so just last week, if you remember, right at the start of the first new year of this, of this new year, Brother Ko Eun Su taught us on evangelism, the reasons for it, the practical aspects of it, the outcome of it, as we heard his God-honoring testimonies about his father and about his father-in-law coming to know Christ. Now, for those of us who were not present last week, or if anyone would like to listen to the message again, you can visit our church website and the video link is there. It is, it is shown in the screen. Yeah? You can just take a snapshot of it. Or you just go to our website, subangmethodist.com. As we are being equipped, the responsibility is ours to practice it, not just to hear about evangelism, which Brother Ansu taught us. And so we are to practice what we have been taught or learned. And we need to rely on God in prayer and receive the promised power of the Holy Spirit or the infilling of the Holy Spirit to witness for Christ. And I pray and pray with me that may there be testimonies be forthcoming to the glory of God in due time. Amen? This year, we are also thinking of organizing a webinar on evangelism. And that's the second area that we will be focusing on. It's related to the earlier one on discipleship. <clears throat> and here we are talking about a, a webinar on evangelism. We organized one webinar last year, the first one, and we are thinking about this for this year. You see, equipping on evangelism is not a once-off thing. It's not that I, I heard 
the sermon last week already on evangelism. That's it. No more. No need to hear any more. No, no, it's not like that. Yeah. Even professional footballers need to train regularly to stay physically fit and effective. How much more we yeah, need to do that to be equipped yeah, now and then. And to remind ourselves about evangelism and how to do it. It's not difficult. It's not difficult. But pray and rely on the Holy Spirit. Okay, you will be kept informed of the webinar, so stay tuned. In the area of evangelism, evangelism, we are exploring another opportunity, that is to reach out and build relationship with seniors, our senior members of the church, those who are, say, about 60 years old and above. And please pray with us for someone to come alongside to work with us so that we can move together to carry out the outreach among the seniors. And so if you sense God has called you and you have the heart for this group of people, please come and see me and we can have a chat on that matter, all right? That's for seniors. And still on the area of evangelism, we are also thinking about reaching out to the kids. And so there's a spectrum of people that we are looking at in evangelism. And we long to see something good happening in the children's ministry. And so we will be exploring the virtual storytelling initiative. And we talked about that at the leaders planning retreat. We want to reach out and build relationships with children and also their parents. And so church, do pray for the outworking of this initiative to reach out to kids and parents. There'll be, I'm sure, a lot of discussions that will be going on in this area. And we pray for God's wisdom. Pray for God's wisdom and guidance in this important area. And by the way, I just want to say one thing. Jesus, our Lord, is a master storyteller. <clears throat> Another area which we would like to explore is to address the needy communities. The third area. Can we have the slide, please? Galatians 6 passage as I mentioned just now, indeed, in other books of the Bible too, such as Matthew, Ephesians, James, and 1 John, to name a few, teach us that we are called to do good to others as an evidence of our faith and that others may glorify God. And so we are not doing good works for their own sake or to please ourselves or to satisfy ourselves. Or to, exp or to make us feel good. No. The good works that we do will meet felt needs and will show evidence of our salvation in God and that ultimately the people, the recipients, will glorify God. That's our goal. The opportunities are there to do good to the needy communities during this prolonged pandemic. Now, because of the uh, lengthy pandemic, there is what is called the pandemic fatigue, even among Christians, you know. <clears throat> and there are many people out there, they are affected mentally and emotionally, feeling burdened, anxious, and uncertain over the future. Others are affected financially, just now, Ting Ung led us in the corporate prayer. He also mentioned about this. Yeah, the mental and the emotional and the financial distress that people are facing. Yeah, there's a loss of jobs. People are unable to find jobs. Many people are unable to find jobs. And uh, people are experiencing pay cuts. And so it's hard to put 
food on the table for many people. Some need to even pawn their personal belongings to survive. Now, here's how many Malaysians have lost jobs, as we can see in the slide. As reported in the online Star paper, nearly 100,000 Malaysians have lost jobs since the start of the MCO, which is 18th of March last year, <clears throat> until 27th of November last year. Nearly 100,000. By now, yeah, the figure may have gone past 100,000. And it's sad to learn about this. Still others are affected educationally, especially children of migrants and refugees. Yeah. I read a story, a recent story, about an 18-year-old Kachin asylum seeker. They are from Myanmar. She's from Myanmar. Her older brother and sister couldn't help her as their income had dropped during the pandemic. So the 18-year-old girl said, if, if I cannot continue my studies, I will be very disappointed. I really want to be an educated person rather than an unskilled worker. This is just one person out of so many untold yeah, uh, and, and, and names that we may not even know who are affected educationally. So I thank God, no? as we saw in the earlier slide, uh, 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 a few of our uh, SMC individuals or members, uh, worshippers, yeah? uh, uh, and gave up their time uh, and their talent, and their abilities to serve the uh, migrant students in the online tuition centers. Praise God for that. But there's a lot more that can be done. <clears throat> and so how do we as a church respond to such needs as people need the help and love of God? You see, church, we cannot be telling them, as James said in another context or a different situation, go in peace, uh, or goodbye and have a good day, stay warm, eat well. But then you don't have that person uh, <clears throat> uh, who have no food or clothing. And you, you, if you're not helping them, these people with no food or no clothing, it is of no use, isn't it? To just tell them goodbye, you know, have a good day, yeah, stay warm, eat well with our words. What good does that do? James is saying that. So as a church, it is right and proper to help the needy. As even the Galatians passage we read, urges, yeah, help the household of faith. And that's what we are doing with the foreign brethren and also others as well, the needy. Apart from giving money and praying, which are all important and helpful, there are also practical ways to help out. <clears throat> so I thank God for the Methodist uh, Crisis Relief Development Group, yeah, uh, under the uh, Chinese Annual Conference of the Methodist Church in Malaysia. They are at the forefront of helping people in practical ways. Not only in the pandemic, even during this flood season, they are calling people to go out to help people, uh, the flood victims. And I sent out the message calling for help to our cell group leaders. Yeah, And I believe that you would have sent, your cell group members would have also received that message from your cell group leaders. <clears throat> That's MRCD. I am to cite another example. Just last Thursday, due to a bad flood in Kuala Lipis, the church lay leader and his wife went to help to clean the debris and wash the victims' homes of mud sludge. And this is a practical thing uh, that uh, the God's people 
uh, are doing. And we thank God for their example. Now, our leaders will soon be reviewing and considering the financial help to be given to our foreign brethren. So pray for wisdom for us in our decision making. <clears throat> but beyond finance, if anyone has doable ideas, workable ideas in helping our foreign brethren in generating sustainable, sustainable income, please let us know. Yeah, we want to hear from you. We are also looking at identifying, identifying the educational needs of the target groups among the needy communities. We can build on the good work that is already going on by individuals providing online tuition to these students, which I mentioned earlier during the pandemic uh, when they cannot attend school. So we want to build on that. And those of us who have a heart for such uh, students, migrants, and are available to teach these students online, <clears throat> please come and find out more and speak to us. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> speak to any of the teachers mentioned there, and also Brother Ben Hao, uh, who is helping with the Myanmar kids in the, uh, uh, in, in, in the home in Mantari. Yeah. So you can speak to any one of them, or you can speak to me as well. Church, let me conclude by recapping three key things for us during this theme message. One, God's purpose for our church in discipleship, evangelism, helping the needy communities cannot be stopped by the pandemic, by the economic slowdown, or other challenges, whatever challenges they may be, even personal challenges. Two, God is seeking people with a heart like his to respond and carry out his purpose for the physical and spiritual well-being of those in need for his name's sake. So step forward in faith to help the needy. Three, God has helped us and God has shown to us that he is able to do much more than what, than what we ask or imagine. For example, in pivoting to online worship service, in supplying to us more funds than we targeted in the anniversary gift day offering for us to help the needy ones and worthy causes. So we have seen God is able to do that, to provide the church with more than what we ask. Because this church seeks, this church wants to be a vehicle of God to help others. And we are to pray as we have that kind of heart, that kind of spirit, that kind of attitude, wanting to be generous, wanting to be sacrificial, yeah? <clears throat> wanting to just be generous with the people. God is going to use this church mightily for his own glory. Amen? And we can see also God is able to do more than what we can ask or imagine in opening new door for our youth to make Christ known through the Alpha online course. And sometimes when we think that uh, perhaps you know, our youth group <clears throat> Maybe even our, we are thinking of our Osh group is so small you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, 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 and so few. And do you know that in this Alpha online course, there are at least eight students who are of the Osh age group joining the Alpha youth online course. And so God is able to do far more than what we can imagine. We can never underestimate the power of God. And we must believe in God and his power. And we must pray for that. All this and more are the manifestation of God's power and goodness and encouragement that we as a church have received from God. Nobody should say that we have not seen the power of God, the goodness of God, or experienced the encourage, encourage, encouragement of God. 
Yeah, nobody should say that. I'm just highlighting just some examples. Of course, <clears throat> you can think through as you reflect, as you write your testimonies for Berita SMC. Maybe you can see more than what I've just shared. And therefore, church and friends, do we dare? Do we dare to trust God any less this year to fulfill God's purpose? For us to fulfill God's purpose that He has shown to us. Do we dare trust God any less this year with the God-given ability or gifts that He had entrusted to us? On the contrary, how much more should we need to obey God's calling and to carry out His purpose, to trust Him, to touch the community, community for Christ, as we can see the last slide. And that is the theme for this year, to touch the community for Christ by grace, by God's grace alone, for God's glory only and all God's people say with conviction in our heart amen and amen let us pray let us pause for some moments perhaps you want to arrow a prayer to God even now this is the opportunity for your one sentence prayer unto God <clears throat> and then I'll pray with you Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you, Lord, that you have brought to our attention the Holy Spirit. You are the one to bring to remembrance our Lord Jesus' words. And also, Lord, to bring to remembrance, Lord, the work of God in our midst. And so we praise you for the things that we have heard and for the many other things, Lord, much more that we didn't hear. But surely you are at work, Lord, in the various small groups in our church and also in the individual lives, Lord Jesus. And we want to praise you forevermore. And we want to pray, God, that even as we have looked back in the past and we have seen your faithfulness toward us, that you are with us. And therefore, for the present and for the future, this church will affirm and declare that we will trust you for the present and for the future for your power and for your encouragement for us to step forward to fulfill your purpose for this church. I just want to pray, Lord, there are many areas, Lord, that we have mentioned, a number of areas we mentioned, and we still, Lord, are still outworking the plan. And sometimes we are still looking for the people to join forces, Lord, to work together in partnership of the gospel. And so we pray, Lord, that you may speak to different ones, Lord, speak to their hearts, and as they hear the calling, Father, I pray, to take, that you may take away any spirit of timidity, but put in them a spirit of love and of God's power, and that they may trust in you, Lord Jesus, to take a step of obedience and of faith in you, and be able to watch you at work, Lord, in their lives going forward, and thereby, Lord, that they will have an encounter with you, an experience with you, and seeing how you work, Lord, in their midst as they go and serve, Lord, among the people, and Lord, that they may have that testimony that they will bring back to the church and that they will be encouraged themselves and that we may all together praise you yet one more time, Lord Jesus. Hear our prayer for this church. Father, we want to thank you for the leadership. We thank you for them coming together to pray together, to seek you for the plans, to discuss together. And uh, Lord, thank you for the wisdom, for the guidance, for the direction that you've given to us. We surrender all these things to you. We're going to pray, God, all these plans we want to acknowledge in the will of God, Lord. Lord, that we will do this and we will do that. And all God's people say, Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat>